Good morning, uh, students. Today we're going to continue with the chapter, the rat trap that we had uh, begun last week. And uh, so just have a quick recap of the things that we had discussed in it, yes, the last uh, week, right? So what is this chapter about? Who all are there in this uh, chapter? The main character is the tramp. And what does he do? He goes from uh, place to place begging uh, for uh, material and for food and right, he makes the rat traps. And uh, so he is there very shabby in his appearance and ragged torn clothes that he's wearing, his uh, very uh, skinny frame, impoverished existence that he has, right? So he's not leading a very healthy, comfortable life. Now, the strange thing is that, yes, of course, uh, he's made these uh, rat traps, but he's very happy with the thought that comes to his mind. That is, yes, that the whole world is a rat trap. I make rat traps, he says, but the world is a rat trap and he feels that everyone is there just moving around the trap right or people are already inside the trap now the peddler or the tramp or the vagabond that you can call him he is outside the trap he feels very happy that i am different from this world so like i might be poor but at least i'm happy right i'm not caught in the trap because he thinks that being in the rat trap it is going to lead to a lot of problems right so what happens with him is that yes one day uh, he seeks shelter in a home and the crofter is there an old man right who was working as a small time farmer but uh, nowadays because of his age he is they're not uh, doing so much of hard work but he is now like he has a cow and he takes care of her and uh, so he has enough money to be quite comfortable. So he not only shares food with uh, the tramp, but also shares his confidences. He tells about his life, he tells about his money. And in the morning as they leave, what does the rat trap uh, maker do? What does this tramp do? He comes back and he steals the money. Now this is one moment that changes his life. Because after that, what does he do? He starts feeling scared. He's afraid that he's carrying with him 30 kroners that uh, someone might uh, steal them from him. And so to avoid that, he goes into the forest, right? And the forest is quite dense and he does not know his way around and he gets lost. He keeps on moving around in the same place. It gets dark. It's the December months we are talking about. And he just lies down on that place. He thinks that I'm going to die over here. And yes, he really regrets his decision of stealing the money. That why did I steal the money? Now I'm in the rat trap. And he actually feels that this suffocation that he's feeling, that sense of helplessness that he is feeling, this is what it feels like to be in the rat trap. So he just wants to, you know, like, uh, just get out of the forest, right? but he's unable to do that. And now it is getting very dark. So as he lies down on the ground, what does he hear? He hears this thumping sound. So as we have discussed, where is the setting of this story? It is Sweden. And mining is a very important part of its economy. Farming is there, mining is there. So all these there. And so the backdrop of the story is going to have some of that also. So right, so the, he uh, as he lies down, he hears a thumping sound and he thinks that, yes, it can be only one sound, that is the beating of the iron sheet. So he thinks that, yes, there's an iron mill nearby. And he's not wrong in his assumption because he finds himself at an iron mill. So there the work is going on as usual and you just cannot imagine that it is such a cold December month outside, it's so terrible weather outside. But here inside, it's very warm because the furnace is there burning and the iron ore is being melted. And yes, in various stages, it is there and it's being beaten into these sheets. So he goes to the blacksmith asking for shelter, but the blacksmith does not even look at him. And he right decides to spend the night over there and he just, uh, you know, like uh, goes to rest. Now what happens, now the iron master, the owner of that iron mill, he's a very ambitious man. He wants his work to progress, he wants to do well, and uh, he comes there for his nightly round. 
and when he comes over there he looks at this man lying on the ground he removes his hat to take a look at his face because it's his property he also wants to know that yes it's quite a common thing that tramps do come and seek shelter right so he removes the hat and when he looks at the person he mistakes him to be right so remember he mistakes he is there right uh, mistake that he does but he does not know that and he thinks that this man was his old regimental friend he mistakes him to be his old regimental friend captain nils follow right so bonds start right and uh, so he uh, requests him that uh, yeah like to come to his house the tramp refuses he knows the truth i am not his friend i don't even know this man i have never seen him before and yes he has the 30 kroners he thinks that these those 30 kroners are going to land him into trouble he makes a lot of excuses and says it no i cannot accompany you and the iron master thinks that this man is ashamed of his shabby appearance let's see his clothes are not good and he is not well dressed so he thinks that he is ashamed of coming to my house and he says that don't worry our house is not very big and you will not feel so out of place over there besides it is christmas and christmas is a festival which everyone wants to spend with their family with the near and dear ones so he wants to celebrate in the true style yes with his friend right but uh, the tramp refuses and uh, the iron master goes away and who comes back right after half an hour that uh, his daughter comes edla she comes and she is yes a smart lady she is not uh, very good looking but uh, she is uh, quite uh, clever observant and when she talks to the man she immediately realizes that this man is afraid of something right either he is hiding something or he has some fear maybe he is ran away from somewhere or he has stolen something and she is very very correct in her observation now let's read what is going to happen further okay so all of you yes uh, look at the screen yes so where were we yeah over here so uh, edla has come and uh, she is uh, come to take the peddler home right and uh, her father must have gone home and discussed it and so she has come to take him home and she is uh, there a very convincing person because uh, she has made this man you no know, uh, join her right and uh, so the valet is there is giving him a fur coat and everybody is there looking at him very surprised and the blacksmith who never gave him any importance who did not even look at him now he's very surprised to see him going home with the master's daughter right He accepted the fur coat which the valet handed him with a deep bow, threw it over his rags, and followed the young lady out of the carriage without granting the astonished blacksmith so much as a glance. He did not even look back at the blacksmith. But while he was riding up to the manor house, he had evil forebodings. Evil thoughts came to his mind. What? Why the devil did I take that fellow's money? He thought. now i am sitting in the trap and will never get out of it right so here was there a chance in his life yes he would have uh, got uh, you know like a, a chance in his life to do better but what did he do he has this fear in his mind because of his actions that he has done what was uh, the misdeed that he did that was he stole the crofters money poor man had trusted him and what did he do in return he stole his money now i'm sitting in the trap and will never get out of it the next day was christmas eve and when the iron master came into the dining room for breakfast he probably thought with satisfaction of his old regimental comrade whom he had run across so unexpectedly so next it was christmas eve and the iron master is very happy that see i've met my old regimental friend and uh, so he feels that he was not there to help him to guide him and he had left the army right and so now he's fallen on bad times and so he is ashamed of his appearance and he is ashamed of his poverty also so that is why he was refusing to join him or he did not want to come home first of all we we must see to it that he gets a little flesh on his bone he's so thin because of his poverty right he said to his daughter who was busy at the table 
And then we must see that he gets something else to do than to run around the country selling rat traps. See, the Iron Master is a very kind person, right? So he wants to help his friend. His friend has fallen on bad times and he wants that his life should be better. So first of all, he wants to feed him, take care of him. Then what is it? He says, I don't want to see him running around this country and selling these rat traps. As it is, that is not much of a business to do. He's not earning much. Look at his appearance. Look at his health. It is queer that things have gone downhill with him as badly as that. Right? From a respectable person, what has he become? Uh, said the daughter. Last night, I did not think there was anything about him to show that he had once been an educated man. See, there are things about yourself that you cannot change. Right? And there are things about you that your clothes cannot hide for you. So if you are educated, if you are aware, and the way you speak, the way you conduct yourself, the way you behave with others is definitely going to show that, yes, you are an educated person. And Edla, see how observant she was. She realized immediately that time that there is something that this man is trying to hide, right? Why is he so afraid? Then she said, like, she thought that, yes, that... Uh, Yesterday, when I spoke to him, the way he spoke, right, it was not the manner of an educated person. And that too of a soldier, right, who are very, very well groomed, right? So she's very, very uh, surprised to think that this man, educated, no, he does not seem to be. You must have patience, my little girl, said the father. As soon as he gets clean and dressed up, you will see something different. So let's have a little patience. And once he has changed and bathed and he's fed properly, there'll be a difference. Last night, he was naturally embarrassed. It was a natural reaction. He did not want his friends to see him in this condition. The tramp manners will fall away from him with the tramp clothes. When he changes his clothes, he will become a better person. Yes, so he will behave like an educated person. Just as he said this, the door opened and the stranger entered. Yes, now he was truly clean and well-dressed. The valet had bathed him, cut his hair and shaved him. So he's looking very neat, clean. Moreover, he was dressed in a good-looking suit of clothes which belonged to the Iron Master. So the Iron Master had even given him a suit to wear. He, wear, he wore a white shirt and a starched collar and whole shoes. See, earlier he was wearing what he was uh, ragged and torn uh, clothes that he was wearing. So his shoes also, right? But now he's wearing whole shoes, white shirt, starched collar, and the suit which the Iron Master has given him. But although his guest was now so well groomed, the Iron Master did not seem pleased. See, what did he say? That with the clothes, things will change. And by, you know, like, of course, yesterday he was embarrassed, but today he'll feel a bit uh, comfortable and he will, you know, like, be more relaxed and we'll see his real self. But the Iron Master is not pleased now. He was waiting for him to change, but now that he has changed, he's looking so neat and clean, he's bathed. He looked at him with puckered brow. So he's just looking at him, not happy. And it was easy to understand that when he had seen the strange fellow in the uncertain reflection from the furnace, he might have made a mistake. But that now, when he stood there in broad daylight, it was impossible to mistake him for an old acquaintance. So yesterday in that dim light, in the light of the furnace, he had made a mistake, right? So maybe he was not able to see the features clearly. He was not able to see the face clearly. That is why he made a mistake. That this man is my friend. But now in broad daylight, after being bathed and shaved and wearing a fresh, clean clothes, the reality is very, very clear. What was it? He is not his acquaintance. He does not know this man. He is not his friend. What does this mean, he thundered? Nine master is angry, right? Angry at the tramp. So what does this mean? He's blaming the person there that you cheated me. 
the stranger made no attempt to dissimulate. So he's not making any efforts to change that opinion. He saw at once that the splendor had come to an end, that that moment of happiness, that moment of glory that he had, it is over, right? It's ended. It is not my fault, sir, he said. I never pretended to be anything but a poor trader. And I pleaded and begged to be allowed to stay in the fort. But no harm has been done. At worst, I can put on my ranks again and go away. Right? So he says that, see, yesterday, I was not never saying that I'm your friend. I never said that. I, I, told, I write, of course, it was very clear that I'm a poor trader. And I, I never said that I was your friend, but you were the one. And he says, never mind, nothing has been done. I can return your clothes and I can put my rags again and I leave this place, right? So the uh, rat trap peddler is there ready to leave. And he has realized that the iron master has realized his mistake. He's not his old friend. He's very angry that why you've lied to me, right? So the iron master is holding the peddler responsible that you cheated me you lied to me you were dishonest you could have said and he did say a couple of times but the iron master was not ready to listen well said the iron master hesitating a listen it was not quite honest either you must admit that i should not be surprised if the sheriff would like to have something to say in the matter now he says that, see, you came here to my house and you were dishonest. Now, what is the sheriff going to say? Right? So, like, I think so I should bring the police, right? They will handle this matter. What do you think is going to the, be the peddler's reaction? The tramp took a step forward and struck the table with his fist. Now I am going to tell you, Mr. Iron Master, how things are. He does not want the sheriff to be called. He has 30 kroners with him. He has landed himself in a very different, difficult situation, right? So he's telling the Iron Master, this whole world is nothing but a big rat trap. All the good things that are offered to you are nothing but cheese rinds and bits of pork set out to drag a poor fellow into trouble. And if the sheriff comes now and locks me up for you, this, then you, Mr. Iron Master, must remember that a day may come when you yourself may want to get a big piece of pork and then you will get caught in the trap. The peddler sold trap, rat traps. He knew nothing else but rat traps. And he loved thinking that this metaphor of the rat world that he has made or that comparison that he has made, if it applies to him, it applies to everyone. So what is he saying that? Yes, fine, this whole world is a rat trap and everything here, it is a bait to make us fall into the trap. And he says, if the sheriff comes and locks me up, Please remember that one day you will also fall into the trap, right? So yes, I have fallen into this trap. It was my mistake. I got tempted. He's not talking about the money right now, but right now he's talking about that. See, you came, you brought me home. And I also got uh, into that. Fine, that uh, let's see what is going to happen. And see, uh, right, even the peddler was expecting that this man might give me a few more kroners, right? So he also got a little bit greedy. So he says, I fell into the trap. But like today, I have fallen into the trap. In future, there might be a day when you will fall into the trap. Then you will realize that this could happen with anyone. The Iron Master began to laugh. That was not so badly said, my good fellow. Perhaps we should let the sheriff alone on Christmas Eve. But now get out of here as fast as you can. So he's saying, fine, let's not disturb the sheriff. It's Christmas Eve, right? And uh, yes, it's a festival and he must be celebrating with his family. So let just do one thing. This, just get out of here as fast as you can. He does not want to see this man. But just as the man was opening the door, the daughter said, I think he ought to stay with us today. I don't want him to go. And with that, she went and closed the door. She says, yes, so let him spend Christmas Eve with us. I don't want him to go. What in the world are you doing, said the father. The father has realized his mistake. I brought a stranger, right? I should not have done that and he should leave my home immediately. The daughter stood there quite embarrassed and hardly knew what to answer. 
That morning, she had felt so happy when she thought how home-like and Christmassy she was going to make things for the poor, hungry, rich. She could not get away from the idea all at once, and that was why she had interceded for the vagabond. Although Edla had realized uh, the previous evening only that this man, why is he so scared? What is there that he is trying to hide? Then she had realized that this man is not educated. So she had said something fishy then only. But now she has there, you know, spoken in, or rather she's speaking against her father and telling him that please let him stay for today because she wanted to celebrate Christmas in the true spirit, sharing it with others and, you know, like, yes, spreading the true spirit of the festival, right? So that is why she had interfered for the vagabond. I am thinking of this stranger here, said the young girl. He walks and walks the whole long, year long, and there is probably not a single place in the whole country where he is welcome and can feel at home. Wherever he turns, he is chased away. Always he is afraid of being arrested and cross-examined. I should like him to have, I should like to have him enjoy a day of peace with us here. Just one in the whole year. And she has a very reasonable explanation. See, this poor man, he walks the whole year from one place to another. He's walking along the highway. And there is no place in this whole country where he is going to be welcome. Nobody's going to invite him, right? And uh, so he uh, is always there because being a, a tramp and he's always under suspicion. People are, you know, like, yes, yeah, suspecting him of uh, crime and of wrongdoings. So he is, they're always in that fear that he is living. And so she says that one day of his life, I just want him to be here and be in peace without any fear, without any worries right so if for one day if we can bring about a change in his life so right this is what she wanted to do right spread that message of kindness and caring and sharing the iron master mumbled something in his beard he could not bring himself to oppose her it was all a mistake of course she continued but anyway i don't think we ought to chase away a human being whom we have asked to come here and to whom we have promised christmas cheer she says yeah it was a mistake right you you mistook him to be his, your friend he's not and but we can't just send this person away when we invited him to our home and especially yes you wanted him at home to make the christmas food disappear faster that is why you wanted your friend, why we wanted this man to be at home to celebrate Christmas with us. You do preach worse than a parson, said the iron master. I only hope you won't have to regret it. So he's not very convinced by what she's saying. But yes, so he's, he's not even opposing her also. And I only hope you won't have to regret this. The young girl took the stranger by the hand and led him up to the table. Now sit down and eat, she said for she could see that her father had given in. So finally, Edla has won. So she has convinced her father to allow this uh, peddler to stay home for one day and at least he can feel comfortable and secure and not have uh, that uh, fear of being chased away or of being lonely on Christmas Eve. So one day in the whole year, or maybe this is the first time in his whole life, let him spend time with what? With a family, right? And of course, taken care of and let him enjoy the festivities and the celebrations at home.